So how do you gain access to him? You're writing letters. And then how do you finally decide, A, it's time to go see him face to face and B, how do you, how do you make that happen? Uh, well, I got my access. And how, but so how do you get it, access though? Is, is what uh, well, he has to give it to you. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, it takes, it, it's ha- actually hard to get into a men's maximum security prison in Los Angeles since Manson. Well, that's, and and that's impossible what, to get in with a recording device. But that's what I'm asking you, Julie. So how do you, what's the process to even begin to do that? Well, figure it out yourself, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll get the exclusive. <laughs> but, you know, he gets me access. Gotcha. So you really want to see him. Yeah. Right. But how you properly do it is you go to the person who runs publicity Mm -hmm. for a prison or, you know, any, Mm -hmm. any law enforcement department, it's called the PIO and you talk to them and you, you know, ask and say, you know, I'm a journalist. I'd like to interview this person for this reason. Um, Unless you're me and then you don't do that and you say, I'm his friend. (laughs) (laughs) And to which the sheriff's deputy said, friend, my ass. (laughs) (laughs) How you know little. I was like, oh, I'm uh, his friend. Friend, my ass. (laughs) But, you know, I walked into that prison and, and I fully expected the whole, I, I hadn't been to a men's maximum security prison. I know enough scumbags to be able to have called them and said, what do I need to do? And they said, well, first of all, bring quarters. You know, all, all you can do is bring a clear plastic bag, right? And I need my prescription for my glasses. Mm. Um, and, you know, you can wear like one pair of earrings one wedding ring, like run your hands under your, uh, you know, turn around, run your hands under your waistband, you know, Mm -hmm. and you can have this clear plastic bag full of quarters, which are for the vending machines. Hmm. If your visitor doesn't come with quarters for the vending machines, you're not cool. Hmm. Um, and I was like vending machines. I was fully expecting that whole like phone right, and, yeah, the, the, and the window, yeah. you know, the hand thing, <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> That's great. And I walked into a room and it was the family visiting room. Hmm. It was like all these families around little plastic tables. There was a little area in the corner for kids with Legos. There's like a photo booth. There's vending machines all around and microwaves. Only visitors can use the microwaves to heat up the burritos. Um, And I'm watching, you know, these convicts hold their babies. And I'm like, this is where I'm meeting the serial killer. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I was watching, there's a red line and the convicts line up behind the red line there, you know, and then they go back in or they come back out and they come for their visiting session. So I'm watching that line, but Sam's in a wheelchair. So he comes in through a different door and he rolls up behind me. Creepy. (laughs) And was like, Ooh, you're my angel. And I was just like, "Ah!" (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Not on the outside, but on the inside. <laughs> right. Now, now this is real. I, I know. And then I was like, oh, well, hello, Sam. And, you know, my mother is very proper. And um, she always taught me, you know, how to sit. It's very um, Emily Post. You know, you cross your, you cross your ankles. You hold your knees together as if you can hold an aspirin between them. Oh. And you fold your hands in your lap. And I just sat there with that. Like, and I, and I was always like a punk rocker. I was like, no, man, like how come men can take up so much space and I'm not allowed to. And I was just like, if you just sit there and hold this aspirin between your knees as hard as you can, then your face is not going to show that you're scared. Hmm. And, and it flowed from there and it was, um, two days and six hours in before I finally started getting his confessions. 
So back up a bit. So what's it like? You said he's in a wheelchair. How old is he at this point in time? 78. Okay. So mm, when Is that true? Late seventies, yes. let's say, right? Yeah. So when you turn around and you've been writing letters and all stuff, and now you turn on your face to face with a man who has killed ninety three women. I didn't know that at the time at all, and neither did anyone. Wow. So, I, so all I know is three. So okay, okay. Let's back that up. Then you're face to face with a man I, who killed three women. Right, What's, but I'm sure he killed more. And my idea is to try to get him to start admitting that he did. What's the vibe of this guy, though? Like when you come face to face with a killer like that, how is it for you? It's hard to explain them and like first look at him. It, you're sort of calculating, mm -hmm. and he's there's an absence that's immediately palpable. I mean, I think people and I've heard detectives like to say, like, it's like you're staring into the eyes of evil. And I, I didn't think that at all. Mm -hmm. um, but there was something missing. Um, and I'm, I'm a good conversationalist and people like to talk to me. And, um, and so, you know, I just started talk to him like he's a person because he mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. we like our monsters, monsters. Um, but the fact is that, you know, that what's monstrous about us is just the very edges of what's human. Mm -hmm. Um, He's still human. So I just, you know, started talking about my kids and my meatloaf and my work and why I was there and what <laughs> I wanted. And, um, you know, and then mostly, of course, he wanted to talk about himself. And and then it started to roll from there. We built a rapport. And um, when he started confessing to me is when I started, uh, you know, talking to the police. I started talking to local jurisdictions and I was talking to the FBI and the Department of Justice, who it turned out I just happened to collide with um, as they were starting to open up this case again. Hmm. So I was in the middle of a federal investigation and I was a reporter. And that is a classically tense um, relationship. <laughs>